Hello my creative peeps. Welcome back to my channel for another video. For those of you that don't know, my name is Leanne and today we are doing part two of my Q&A. If you missed part one, I will leave it linked up here for you so you can go check it out. But basically I asked you in the beginning of March if you had any questions you wanted me to answer and you gave me quite a few questions so that's why there's two parts obviously. Uh, but this part of the Q&A is all about journals, my journals, and stuff like that. If you want to see all of the oddball questions, I think there was like glue and other things, you can go check that one out. So, first, how long have you been journaling? Uh, the answer is pretty much my whole life. If you want an in-depth story, you can check out one of my other Q&As. It was probably the first one I ever did. So I'll uh, wait here while you uh, go watch that one. Now that you're back, the next question is, when did you make your first junk journal? Um, so I'm going to say that uh, that was probably my first year of college, which was six or seven years ago, which feels really weird to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I had watched a tutorial from Jenny Belly. Um, who is another creator here on YouTube and she was making her own journals and I was like, yes, I need to do this. Um, so I did it and that was my first one. I'll leave that tutorial if I can find it linked below for you guys so you can guys can check it out. Um, it'll be nice and nostalgic for me um, and it could be fun for you. So, so the next question is, do you keep all of your journals? Um, for the most part, there are a few that I don't um, keep. I, there are a lot of planners I've had in the past that I don't keep. Um, I have kept a few of them. So yeah, but um, I don't know. If it's just like a test journal and I didn't really like a lot of the pages in it, then I'll take out the ones that I liked and recycle the rest. Because um, I have a lot of journals and if I can save storage space for the ones that I like by keeping the ones that I don't like, then out they go. But yes, I keep the majority of them. How do you store them? I store them in tubs <laughs> in my garage. Uh, I have like a cool uh, old style trunk thing that I'd like to keep them in in my future apartment or wherever I end up living. But right now they're just stored in a giant Rubbermaid tub in my garage. And then inside my actual room, I have like a little decorative lockbox. Um, that I'll put like the ones from the past year in. So like usually if I'm gonna look back on a journal, it's within that time frame um, because I need to reference it for a video or figure out when something happened or something like that. So I'll keep like a year's worth in my room, but other than that, they go in the giant Rubbermaid bin. And I'll do a better in-depth video storage thing, not video storage, I'll do a better in-depth video on my journal storage later this summer when it's warm and I can take you in my garage and show you um, how I store them. But yeah, the next question is how many journals have you filled? Um, a lot. <laughs> uh, since I've been journaling so long, it is a lot. I numbered them last year, I think, and it's over 60, I think. Um, maybe more i don't know that'll also be put in the journal storage video because um it'll be easier to figure it out then but yeah it, definitely over 50. um how many journals do you work in at one time it really all depends i have some journals that like i've started that i don't work in like very often um so i don't really count those but in any, like, if I'm going to work in a journal within the week, I have my bullet journal, my pen pal journal, my written and creative journal, which usually is separate, but it's together this time. My art journal. It's like five. Usually like five. Um, and then how do I choose which thing goes in which journal. 
when I'm going to journal about something. Uh, and it really all, like, I just go by feeling or, like, yeah, what I'm feeling, basically. So I have, like, my bullet journals kind of, like, working out stuff in more of the planning and, like, to-dos and big ideas and keeping stuff for Etsy together. Um, so if I'm trying to work out a new project, it'll probably go in there. But if I'm just journaling, like written journaling one day, and part of that idea comes out in that journal, it goes in that other journal. Like, I'm not too worried about it. Um, and then my art journal, um, you know, sometimes it's art in it. Sometimes I'll put a photograph in it. Sometimes I'll sketch in it. Sometimes all that stuff goes in a different journal. It really just depends on what I feel like that day. Hopefully that helps. The only one that has, like, my pen pal journal, all my pen pal stuff goes in there. That's like the only one that really is super structured. Let's see. How do you get ever get over a journal funk? It's been weeks since I last touched my journal. So I made a short little video about journal funks and I could talk about journal funks for hours so I won't bore you to death. Um, but I'll leave that linked here if you want to go check out the journal funk video. But my number one tip... Um, is to, I guess, forgive yourself. Like, don't put pressure on yourself. Like, it's okay. I've gone through years where I haven't journaled, and I still do it. Like, you're not, not a journaler because you don't do it every day, and it's okay to have those dead times. So my top two easiest things for getting back into it is if you're getting back into writing journaling, just sit down and write why you haven't journaled. If it's because you haven't felt inspired to, write that. I have not felt inspired to journal lately, blah, blah, blah. And usually, if you're just writing like your thoughts out like that, other stuff will trickle out and you might get all fired up or maybe that's all you write for the next three months and that's okay. My next thing, if you're trying to get back into art journaling or um, stuff like that, this isn't a good tip but it works for me, um, I buy new supplies. It could just be a new sticker sheet. It could be like a new color of paint. Like you don't have to go on a whole shopping spree and spend your entire life savings on some new supplies, but just like one thing that gets you excited. I really get excited by color, so I'll buy like one new paint or whatever, or one new distress oxide and then go to freaking town. Um, and that usually gets me back into the swing of things. Um, also doing something that you feel like is worth documenting. So if you document photos, go do something you're gonna feel like documenting after. So like, even if you just get your favorite coffee and like go drive to your favorite beach or whatever and sit in the car and <laughs> drink it because it's way too freaking cold to go to the beach right now, at least in the uh, northern part of America it is, but just, Get something, do something that gets you excited and then journal about that thing that you did. Um, and that'll help. And if not, at least you did something cool. The last question that I have is from Toothpick to Marshmallows. And she says, my aunt is leaving her journals to her daughters for them to read for when she has passed on. Will you ever dedicate or leave one of your journals to someone? And I feel like this is a pretty common question. I feel like a lot of people journal, not everyone, but a lot of people journal to leave something behind for other people. I don't journal for that reason really at all. Um, I journal because it keeps me grounded. It helps me work through things. It makes me happy. I love sharing it with you guys. It's really more of a process thing than an actual documentation thing. So, to be honest, at this point, um, I am going to leave my journals to somebody I trust. Um, if I, for some reason, am to pass away before my aunt does, my aunt will get all my journals and she can do whatever she wants with them. Um, but I, if I don't want anybody to see them, like, I'm okay with her seeing them and she can do whatever she wants with them. But if I pass on and there's nobody else that I trust with them, they're going to be burned. 
and yeah, like that's just, <laughs> I don't know. They're for me in the moment and I, the stuff I document is fun sometimes, but a lot of the times my writing is just me working through things because my, to me, my journal is a tool and I don't want anybody reading that and I don't even want to read that. So yeah, when, when I'm gone, they're, they're going to be gone too. And that's just, that's just how it is for me. Um, I think it's great that some people want to leave legacies for other people. It's just not my thing. So off of that heavy topic, this brings us to the end of the Q&A. So thank you guys so much for asking all the questions. If there was anything that I didn't answer, um, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. And yeah, I'll answer it somehow in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and sticking with me. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it because it really helps out my channel and it helps other people find my videos, um, which if you enjoy them, why wouldn't you want other people to find them, right? Uh, so that I can cre cre keep creating more content for you guys. Please subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos and it's free so you, you ain't got anything to lose. And I'll catch you guys in my next one. Take care, guys. Bye.